This is your News Now Sports. Good morning. Tweets, letters, hype videos, and crystal ball predictions. The college football recruiting process becomes more flashy with every passing year. Fans sit on the edge of their seats as 18-year-olds grab hats off of tables. It's become a public spectacle, something only a few truly get to experience. Well, after receiving 18 Division I offers, Lima Seniors Brandon Taylor is one of them. And while the soon-to-be Nittany Lion has already made his choice, Arcady Gilholy sat down with the defensive end to see what the recruiting process was like for him. Lima Seniors' Brandon Taylor can now let out a big sigh of relief. For the Spartan senior, the recruitment process is over and a decision has been made. Coming into this year, my senior year, that it was my goal to be committed to a school so that way I wouldn't have to worry about it. Just the burden of having to choose and communicate with all the coaches and just go through the whole process. I mean, the process is great. It's a, it's a blessing because how many people get to go through it. But, um... Just, I just want to focus on being a Spartan and enjoy my last senior season. Taylor went on only one official visit, and that was to State College, but he visited several schools and was a bit starstruck at times during the process. At first, it was, I was kind of starstruck. Like, wow, I'm really standing in front of Jim Harbaugh. I'm, I'm shaking James Franklin's hand. Like, it was crazy. But uh, after a while, like, I just, I don't know, it was just, it was really a blessing, and uh, it just, made me more hungry, really. The soon-to-be Nittany Lion says he remembers watching Michigan games with his dad growing up and dreaming of this moment. And now that it's finally a reality, he's ready to go to work. I'm just looking forward to the grind. Uh, I love working out. I love competing. I'm just ready for all that. I'm ready to take it on. I'm ready to fight for a spot. Uh, not much more than that. I'm just ready to get it started. But until then, Brandon is ready to tackle his senior season and hopes his success can carry on to those who may one day sit in his same position. It's an honor, and uh, I love Lyman. It's my hometown, and uh, that's what it's all about. Just for the younger guys, and, uh, getting these schools in here. So for the next man up, you know, they shine, and that's what happens. You just got to keep working. In Lima, Katie Gilhooley, your News Now Sports. Thanks, Katie. NFL news out of Cincinnati yesterday as the Bengals announced that guard Clint Bowling has retired from the NFL. The 30-year-old was a fourth-round pick of the team back in 2011 out of the University of Georgia, and he has appeared in 114 games for the Orange and Black while starting in all but two of them. Switching over to the Diamond, Acme District action continues at Shawnee yesterday. Van Wert can clinch a state tournament berth with a win over St. Mary's. Top one, Van Wert gets the bats going as Turner Witten smokes one to center field. Out of the reach of the center fielder and all the way to to the wall. T.J. Reynolds being waved around from second. He scores. Not too far behind him is Parker Conrad as he scores all the way from first to put the Cougs up by two. Two batters later, Van Wert adds to it as Caden Bates bloops one into center for a base knock. Scoring is Witten as the Cougars strike for four in the top of the first. Owen oh, Treese would help them hang on to that lead as he rings up one to end the second here. This game postponed in the sixth inning with Van Wert up four to two. It will be resumed today at Shawnee at 5 p.m. More acne contests at St. Henry as Minster battles Coldwater. Both these teams have already punched their ticket to the state tourney. Now they play for a district title. Very first batter of the game into left, but Jacob Overman comes diving in to rob Minster of a hit. The Cavs, though, would not have a quick top of the first. Already 2 nothing when Adam Kettner singles into center. Driving home, Trent Rutgerman. Minster has a quick 3-0 lead, and now they've loaded the bases as Johnny Nixon singles to center. Scoring Kettner from third. It's 4 nothing. and the bags are still full of cats. Here's Eric Schmidt into left, plating both East Ethan Lemkul and Jacob Niemeyer. Minster sends 11 batters to the dish in the first inning, jumping up 6-0. Bottom half, Justin Nixon on the mound, sawing off the Cavs hitter, snagging it with the bare hand and turning to throw a perfect strike to first. That ends the frame with Minster up 6-0. In the second, they add on some more. Lemkul into right, bringing around Austin Brown as well as Kettner. Make it 8-0, Cats. And then in the third, it's Jack Olberding, belting one to the fence in left center. Schmidt scores as Minster. Minster claims the district championship with a 12-0 win in five innings. They'll play the Van Wert St. Mary's winner on Saturday at 2.30 in Coldwater. The host Cavs open the state tourney against Anthony Wayne on Saturday at 7.30. 
More news from the Diamonds today. UNOH and Locos pitcher Tyshawn Chapman is exiting Lima after just one season, signing a professional contract with the Kansas City Royals. Chapman already is reported to their spring training facility in Arizona. He went 1-0 with a 2.45 ERA over nine games with UNOH this spring, striking out 18 batters over seven and a third innings of work. He was also 1-0 with the Locos this summer, throwing six innings over six games with 13 strikeouts and a 4.66 ERA. NBA news out of Cleveland yesterday as the Athletics Shams Charania reports that the Cavs have waived veteran shooting guard J.R. Smith. Charania also reporting that Cleveland had been attempting to trade Smith all the way up to yesterday's waiver deadline at 5 p.m. Eastern. The 33-year-old guard spent the last five seasons with the Cavs and is now a free agent. Staying in Cleveland yesterday but switching to the Diamond. Game four of a 10-game homestand for the Indians as they begin a four-game set with the Tigers. Bottom two, the Indians get things started as with two away. Mike Freeman takes one the other way and into the seats and left. A two run shot is his third of the season as it's two zip tribe. Top four that lead evaporates as Kristen Stewart skies one deep to right field. This ball is not coming back as it two lands in the seats. Stewart has a two run shot of his own as the Tigers pull even. This game delayed for over an hour in the seventh inning but when it resumed the Indians bats came back to life as Jose Ramirez rockets one down the right field line. Carlos Santana and Jordan Luplo score on the RBI double as the Indians take game one with an 8-6 win. In Chicago, a key NL Central class yesterday as the Reds begin a series with the division-leading Cubs. Top one, the Reds break the ice as with two away, a Eugenio Suarez takes the full count pitch and deposits it over the left center wall. A solo shot for Suarez is his 22nd as the Reds jump in front. They trail in the sixth though when Yasiel Puig cuts that in half. He cranks a moonshot into left that carries and carries before dropping into the netting for a solo shot. The Reds improve the 7-3 against the Cubs this year as they win it 6-3. That's all the time we have for sports. Have a great day.